Welcome back. In this video, we'll cover how to install an ID on your computer that will help in the development of Node.js projects. We'll cover two IDs. The first one that I'd recommend if you have a more powerful PC is JetBrains WebStorm. This ID has the widest range of helpful features and includes a whole library of optional plugins you can add on for helping with various different tasks in front and back end web development. If your PC is less powerful, then I'd recommend you go for brackets, which is a lightweight ID that still includes a lot of useful features like autocomplete, uh, but will work much better if you don't have such a powerful computer. This is future Adam here. One thing I forgot to mention is that WebStorm is not free. It does have a free 30 day trial fee to use, and it's also free if you're a student and have a student email address, but otherwise it costs. If you don't have the money to buy it, then I would still recommend brackets, but if you do, then I definitely recommend to use WebStorm and it's worth paying for because of all the extra features it provides. So first we'll cover WebStorm. We'll just look for it using Google or another search engine of your choice and we'll just type WebStorm into the search bar and press enter. You're looking for the result that says WebStorm, the smart JavaScript ID by JetBrains and the URL should be jetbrains.com forward slash WebStorm. Just double check that the URL is correct because you don't want to accidentally go onto any scam sites and download a virus. So if you found the right one, just click on it and you should see this page appear. Helpfully, just the same as node.js, it automatically shows us the download link for our operating system. So you should just click download and the download should begin to a directory of your choice. Now to save time, it's quite a big download, so I've downloaded it in advance. So once your download is complete, come back to the video and then I'll show you how to install it. So once you've installed it, you can just open up the installer by double clicking on it. And if you are on Windows, you will see the uh, asking for administrator privileges. And if it happens, just click yes. So if we click next, we'll see this page and this page is asking us where we want to install it to. You can change this if you want, but I'm going to leave it as the default directory. Now it will give you some installation options. So the ones that we want are a 64-bit launcher if you're on a 64-bit operating system and a 32-bit launcher if you're on a 32-bit operating system. So I'm on 64-bit, so that's what I selected. If you're not sure if your operating system is 64-bit or 32-bit, then you should go for the 32-bit option as this will work on both. Uh, you want to create these associations as well. So if you create an association with JS, CSS, HTML and JSON, it will mean that whenever you see one of those files in your file directory and double click on it, it will automatically open up um, WebStorm. For this one, we don't want to check this. This just allows you to launch it from the command prompt, but we don't need that. And this, we don't need either JREs for Java and we're not using that, so we won't select that either. So then we'll click next. And then you can select a start menu folder to put the um, installer in. I mean, sorry, the start menu icon, but we'll just leave it as default for now and then the installation will begin. <clears throat> this is quite a heavy IDE, so the installation will be quite long. So I will cut the video now and resume it once the installation is complete and then you should resume the video there too. Okay, so now the installation is completed, you should see this window and we're gonna click on run WebStorm and the reason we'll do that is just so when we click finish it can open up and what we know that once it's opened up it works successfully. So if you click finish, it should open up. It might take a few minutes though, or a few seconds rather, because it's quite a um, heavy ID. So we'll see this installation window now once it's opened. And this is just asking you if you want to import your WebStorm settings. So I already had WebStorm installed before, so I've got previous settings and I'm going to import those just so it's nice for me to use. But if you are installing WebStorm for the first time, you won't have any, so just click do not import settings instead. If you click OK now, then you should see WebStorm uh, user agreement open up and you want to read through this and click I confirm and accept. I've already done re read through it, so I'm just going to accept it immediately and then press continue. Now this gives you the option about sending anonymous usage statistics to JetBrains to help improve their product. If you're concerned about your privacy, then it is anonymous, but you can still opt to not send it. But I want to help them develop it, so I'm going to send usage statistics, but that's purely your personal preference. Okay, so now we've done all of that, you can see this nice window opening up. 
Um, this doesn't need to, this conflicting plugin shouldn't come up. This is just coming up because I've already installed some plugins, but you shouldn't have any errors like that if you're installing it for the first time. I just clicked enable and restart to fix it, but you shouldn't have that problem. So now it's restarting and you can see this progress bar shows when it's loading. Okay, so now we know WebStorm's open up correctly. This is the window you'll first see because you haven't opened up any files, but when we open up a file, you'll see a different window and I will be developing WebStorm for the duration of this project. So in the fourth video, you'll see what it looks like to use. Now, if you don't have a powerful PC, then the, bra the ID I'd recommend is brackets. So we'll just again search for brackets in Google. And the first one that should come up is brackets.io here. Brackets, a modern open source code editor that understands web. If you click on that, then we will see it. And again, just like WebStorm and Node.js, it shows us the installer for our operating system. So again, you just want to click, you're going to want to click download and it will download. Again, I've already downloaded it to save some time. So once you finish the download, come back to the video and we'll see how to install it. Uh, so we'll now just open up the installer. And this one's not quite so involved because it's a smaller ID. So you're going to want to choose an installation directory or just leave it as default, which is what I'm going to do. Add brackets not just to path for command line and use that we shouldn't need. And add open with brackets to explore context menus we will want because that will allow you to more easily open brackets when looking at JS files. If we click next, then it says click install. So we'll just do that again. And again, just like WebStorm, if you're on Windows, it will ask for administrator permission, just say yes, and then the installation will begin. This is a much smaller install because it's a much smaller ID, so it shouldn't take too long. Okay, now the installation is finished, we can close the installer by clicking the finish button like that. And then we're going to open the search bar and we'll search for brackets. And the reason for that is just so we can find it. You can see at the top there. And now we can open it to make sure that it's been installed correctly and it's all working fine. Now for me there's an error opening the file, but that's just because I've opened a file before that I don't have anymore. But if it's a first time install, you shouldn't get anything like that. And this is what it looks like. And in the middle there will be code if you have a file open. So now you've got an ID successfully installed, you can move on to the next video where we'll introduce NPM, how you can use it and what it's used for.